So I'm here with Katerina Vanderham, former fitness model, entrepreneur, and princess. Katerina, thanks so much for being here. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Jason. Good to see you. Good to see you. So a lot of people who don't know this, um, you know, you're doing three businesses right now. Tell us a little bit about them. Yes, I started with the media business about six years ago um, because, you know, blogs became very popular and everybody wanted to have a blog. And, you know, I was in the fitness industry and fashion modeling and all that stuff. And I wanted to kind of promote myself through through some PR uh, outlet because PR, I learned that PR is very expensive and I couldn't afford it. Everybody would be coming to me, Katerina, help me to get into magazines because, you know, nobody's picking me up and it's just extremely expensive. So I was thinking and I started my blog and I'm like, why don't I just create a magazine and give an opportunity to all the staff in California and help these young women to be published uh, because for models like me, you either had the men's magazines or you had uh, yeah, like high fashion magazines, which I am not a high fashion model and, and majority of the models here in LA are not high fashion models. Uh, and fitness magazines are, you know, a little bit tough too. So I started the media company. It started to grow. Later, we acquired another website called fashionizers.com. First one was vivaglamagazine.com. And we do have a hard copy of the magazine. Nice, nice, beautiful. Very nice, glossy magazine. But, you know, the majority of the business is obviously online because that's where everybody is. And uh, cosmetics, being a huge, passionate, you know, beauty person I guess my whole life and I love makeup I love hair I like when we women embrace uh the outer beauty as well not just the inner beauty because everybody always talks about the inner beauty which is the key I get it but the life is so much I think uh, colorful and and happier and better if you are happy with what you look like too because what I learned from my life that meeting so many women around the world they are so many of them are so judgmental and uh, and hateful simply because they don't like what uh, they don't like what they look like and they don't want to look into the mirror they judge themselves and if i learn if everybody can help themselves and be be happy with what they see in the mirror it helps the psychic so much that the world becomes a better place and people stop judging as much as they do these days so it's not like i care about the other beauty so much for any other reason it's just you need to be happy, whatever it is, and you're happy, and you don't want to look into the mirror simply because you hate what you see. Then freaking do something about it, you know, change it, put makeup on. That doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong in life. Just do something so you're not judging other people because it's just really bad. I think I hate people being judgmental. <laughs> and you know what I find is extremely amazing about your story. You know, doing all of these things that you do, but people don't know, maybe a lot of people don't know that you're actually an immigrant and you know, you came here as an immigrant. I mean, tell us what that was like. Give us like some insight on how you came here and you know, how you've been so successful in America. I mean, give us the rundown on that. You know, it, it took me 15 years to get to some kind of a, uh, okay place where I felt like, okay, now I fit in here and I can do something, but it is a huge challenge when you leave. I left in the 90s. I left in 1998. I was 22 years old, a young woman with, you know, $500 in the pocket, not speaking the language, coming to the city, Sin City, pretty much. And just everybody was trying to take advantage of me. Everybody saw me as this girl from Russia, which I'm not from Russia, but people just assumed I'm Russian. Everybody offered me all kinds of stupid jobs and uh, sexual favors to get paid for and stuff like that and I was just like screaming and yelling deep inside and you know I chose to work very very hard I always worked two three jobs I did graphic design I did you know waitressing job anything that I could feel proud of that when I wake up I can call my mom and she doesn't have to regret letting me to the big world um, and it was hard because even later on when I got into modeling and, and um, you know, the entertainment industry, people always throw you in, in, in one particular category and it's so hard to break away from it. And even later, like 15 years later, when I tried to raise funds for my business, people would laugh at me like nobody's going to invest into your company. Like, you know, kind of referring to what I look like, where I'm from, 
you know, I still have an accent. Obviously, you, you don't lose it when you come here already as an adult. And just going out there, putting yourself out there with a business plan and having these meetings and seeing how people are not taking you seriously. You know, it's, it's, very, it's very hard and you have to keep your face straight and you have to still look professional. And uh, if anybody wants to know more, you can look up my docu-series. I have seven episodes online called The 90s Girl. It's about me com coming here and a little bit of my background, uh, which I think is pretty well done. The 90s Girl talks about the, the struggles uh, and stuff. But yeah, it's a long, long story. Like I would bore you guys here if I went into all the details, but definitely not an e easy thing. What's the, web what's the website for people who aren't familiar with how to get and watch this docu-series? So you can either go on YouTube and look up 90s Girl under Viva Glam Magazine channel, or you can go to the website vivaglammagazine.com and in the video section, you'll get the 90s Girl web series and all the episodes are there. So start from the bottom up. Um, and, you know, we're going to continue adding more because basically I try to document a life now and how I still struggle, how I still try to make my dreams come true and how I still try to do whatever it takes to build my empire, which I hope to have one day. Uh, and it's not easy. And we try to make it a little fun and, and with fun edits. Uh, so it's, it's kind of cute. It's kind of cute. I think people will enjoy it, even though if you don't know who I am, I think it's pretty well done. So I'm pretty proud of it. Thank you. Great. And what do you got planned for the next six months and the next year? Like, Give us some insight on your goals or objectives coming up for you in the next six months to the year. I think the next six months to a year are going to be very, very tough because I am actually in a major transition of my business right now where um, I'm trying to figure out if I should honestly wrap up the media business because it's becoming very different than what I, when I started out. The money is kind of leaving the digital advertising a little bit. It, it has moved to the social media influencers. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out what to do with the media business and should I go into more of the cosmetics and, and uh, beauty business, although cosmetics are now oversaturated too. So I'm working on some idea uh, for hair that I think I'm going to be working on for the next six months. It's too early to mention anything, but I think I will be transitioning more into developing beauty products for women and hopefully getting into major retailers uh, such as Ulta and Sephora and you know it's gonna be lots of hard work the next six months for sure so I, I actually don't know this what is your background give us some insight on your background I know a lot of people think you're Russian but what are you I am from Slovakia I was born when it was former Czechoslovakia so I'm quarter Czech and then uh, Slovak um, and I you know I went to high school I went to college I studied uh, under Oxford University for a couple of years in Slovakia it was a special project in 1994 when they came to the country and selected only three schools and only a certain group of students to take this project uh, and I uh, actually won uh, the school round I won the national round because it was kind of a competition and I won I took a third place in the international round in Sweden then after high school, so I graduated from high school just a week apart, a week um, apart from actual high school and the Oxford degree. So it was just like a lot of studying. After that, I went to a private business school for a year. Uh, and then I ended up working for a French company in Slovakia for four years in the marketing division because I studied marketing business. The company was going under. Uh, 1998, I decided to relocate to... California. I came, you know, with $500, not knowing anybody. I started to clean homes. I started to pass out flyers. Uh, I literally started from the floor, you know, you can say. And then, you know, just slowly being a waitress, um, you know, being a soda machine girl, ice cream girl, whatever, you name it, on the Third Street Promenade. I actually worked for Charlie Tamel, who used to be friends with Arnold Schwarzenegger, because they had one of the restaurants. So I him there a lot and all those you know fitness stars and slowly you know when I was a waitress I got kind of discovered by uh, a couple uh, a photographer and his wife who was a makeup artist they wanted to test shoot me so I ended up test shooting they liked the photos they got me an agent and still even though my modeling pretty took off I still always kept other jobs like graphic design I went to Santa Monica College 
to actually study graphic design because I learned a lot on my own, but I just wanted to know more. And I work for a number one real estate photographer in uh, in Los Angeles, processing celebrities' homes. My work was published on two covers of Architectural Digest, which is a huge magazine here in, in the in United States. Um, so always just two, three jobs, you know, making a little money here, a little money there. And eventually, um, you know, I just felt like I know so much and I'm all over the place and I wanted to kind of take everything I've learned and put it under one roof. And that was my media company. It was Viva Glam magazine, which I started in 2012. Um, and you know, just everything from graphic design, everything from makeup, hair, modeling, being in Hollywood, PR, like I just, I was able to utilize all that. Wow. And what do you do? Like for a lot of girls out there that are young, that are looking up to you, that are saying, wow, this girl's so beautiful. She's an entrepreneur. She's driven. She's got all these things going for her. What do you do to like perform? Like when, when the stakes are really high, you know, like, you know, you're going to make a shift or you're just really stressed out. Like, how do you, how do you, is it a mental state? Is it like, give us some insight on what you do to perform. The number one, it is mental state. Yes, you're absolutely, absolutely right. And you know what? For me, uh, in my case, it is the thought that I don't have a choice. I have to succeed. I don't have a choice. I don't have family in America. I don't have a husband or I don't have anybody here. So if something happens to me or I can't pay my rent or if I can do things, like there's no one to help me pretty much. I'm on my own. So I have to, I have always that thought that I have to succeed. I don't have a choice. So I always feel like I'm on a treadmill, which is sometimes dangerous. Um, but, you know, to find some kind of a balance, uh, what I do is I have an assistant. She's amazing. She always helps me to stay on track because my mind is just so exhausted from doing so much uh, that she is the one who always uh, calls me and reminds me of my meetings or books things for me uh, because I do I do get very sidetracked easily. Um, also, my plant-based lifestyle. I, I'm a vegan. I've been a plant-based person, I guess, for over 20 years now. Uh, I was a vegetarian at first, but then I switched to vegan. So that helped me to not to get tired in the afternoon. I would always fall asleep like after one o'clock, being exhausted, being 100% plant-based keeps me running on a treadmill. Uh, I drink coffee. That helps me to keep going. Uh, I do meditate. I try to meditate. Um, and um, I try to give myself enough time, you know, get up 6 a.m., no later than 6 a.m. Even if I'm still in bed, I get to work on my phone or on my computer, but I'm up and I'm running. It's no later than 6 a.m. Go to sleep around 10 to make sure I get my eight hours. And um, I stay in that routine even when I travel, even when it's a weekend, like Saturday, Sunday, I always get up at 6. I don't like to sleep in. And um, that's it. I think that's for the most part what I what I try to do. Just keep running. And you know what? And I don't have kids. You know, I don't have kids. So the fact that I can get up and really allocate all the time I have to myself, I think makes a huge difference. I don't know how those women who have children do it. I have so much respect for them. But you know, to find enough time in a day to get everything done, be successful, have family, it must be. It must be so like a lot, you know, and it's so much respect to everyone who does it because I, I you know, I'm single and I don't know like how they do it. <laughs> so, I mean, we know each other from the fitness industry and I want to talk a little bit about that before we wrap up today. I mean, we met at the trade show and, you know, I could see, you know, you were just, you know, go getter, really hungry, beautiful. And, you know, we put you on the DXL magazine cover Tell us a little bit about, you know, the fitness industry, the journey you had there, you know, and how, how that was for your career, you know, to become where you are today. You know, I absolutely love, love remembering those times. There's nothing, nothing negative I can think of. And I just love being part of this huge community, especially these conventions. Like I take my work seriously. So if I work for someone, doesn't matter what company it is, I put my hundred percent like it's my own company. I would always talk to people. I would always laugh with people. I would eat with people. We would go out. And, you know, even the actual photo shoots were always fun. Uh, 
people seem so inspiring to me because everybody's so hungry in the fitness industry. Everybody's trying to, you know, become someone and everybody's so dedicated to their body. And, and I got so inspired by that because, you know, I can get very comfortable in my own body, you know, and seeing these people like putting so much sacrifice into it, it's, it's always mind blowing to me. Great time. I mean, fitness industry really has taught me a lot. Um, I'm glad I spent those years exactly there, met amazing people and really have nothing bad to say, just, just good times. You nice. know? Are you still doing any modeling right now or any photo shoots or anything fashion wise right now at all? I, um, you know, at this point, I'm more selective, right? So I have a movie coming out, hopefully this year, it was supposed to come out last year. But I play one of the lead roles uh, next to Snoop Dogg and Nichelle Nichols and over 40 actors from the original series of Star Trek. So I, I am one of, you know, very, very few, like, uh, fresh faces uh, from the whole movie, because everybody's like, well known. Uh, I also, you know, shot some music videos for some artists um, that are upcoming big artists, but very little, you know, just very selective. I mean, I shoot for magazines when they do a feature on me, some interview, but it's always about me. It's my PR. I don't rent my face to other companies as much anymore because I have my own company. I'm, I'm the face of my own products, uh, of my own magazine. So, you know, I don't do modeling as much anymore and it's fine. I'm, you know, there's, a bus full of young girls coming to this town every day. You know? <laughs> yes. You have a lot to choose from. <laughs> Did you have any questions for myself or Nutribolics before we wrap up today? Um, do you have vegan line or vegan friendly products? We're working on uh, a vegan protein right now. And we're also, we're also, uh, we just released a, a product called Keto Carb. I don't know if you're familiar with like the whole. It's not that one. I saw it on your. Yeah. Media. So that one's 100% vegan, and that's out right now. And that's just like I think we we sold out in the first like four days. So it's oh, wow. rampant. Like people are loving that one. But yeah, we're we're definitely starting to you know take the vegan seriously. Like it's it's becoming more and more you know known, and we're trying to move our whole brand to being as natural as possible. Excellent. I would love to try it. I'm going to look for it. Maybe you can send me some. Yes, I will send you some. <laughs> I'll send you some samples. You, I got you. No problem. Yeah. Listen, thanks so much for coming on the show. Honestly, we really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you.